All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Rolio Jack in the house. We've just done an amazing podcast. Go and check it out. Link underneath the video here. Uh, he tells you his full trading story and then gives you some great tips on getting your trading mindset right as well. So, Rolio, welcome to the show uh, again. And uh, what are you going to show uh, share with us today? Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to give you guys a full uh, breakdown of the trade that I've taken uh, in last week on GBPAUD. So we're going to look at uh, some technical data, fundamental data, as well as order flow and sentiment data. And then I'll give you guys also a quick breakdown for the situation that we can um, look at trading on the gold as well. Okay, so and without I'll tell any you further what, ado. What, what we yeah. might do is we, we'll jump, we'll get you to come back on and give us an update on the gold trade as well so we can see if it played out, how you got in, if you didn't get in, what happened. So that'll be awesome. All right, let's share your screen and get on with it. Hey folks, my sponsors City Traders Imperium have just launched some amazing changes to their funded trader program you got to check out. You can now skip the whole evaluation, trade gold as well as Forex, plus they've increased the drawdown you're allowed in both the evaluation and when funded. With C2A it's even faster and easier to reach up to $4 million in funding with a 50-70% to 70 profit share. Click the link in the description to find out what else has changed. So uh, what we're going to do is, so the first thing we are going to do is look at some uh, so we're going to start with the technical data first. Now, starting on the monthly time frame, what do we have? Now, from a monthly uh, perspective, we can clearly see how the market had broken above this strong structural level over here. Now we can see how the market had acted as a level of resistance. Mark broke above that resistance, tested it as support, support held, market rallied up, came down. But then all of that resistance that the market had broken, that then became support. Support did not hold here. Market broke below that, came back, tested it as resistance, rejected it, and then finally broke above that level from a monthly perspective. Now, if you drop down on the week, Weekly time frame, what do we have? Now, from a weekly perspective, we clearly saw that last week we had a candle close and break at this level. Now, this level over here acted as a level of resistance. Mark broke above that, came to test it as support. Definitely the continuation expected to the upside from here as well. Now, from a daily perspective, what do we have? Now, here on the daily time frame, we had the market print this massive impulse. After an impulse, you expect a correction before the continuation to the upside there as well. Now, the best way to measure your take profit is by taking your Fibonacci there from the low to the high. And what you want to do is, is you want to use the Fibonacci extension over here, which is the minus 27 as a take profit level. But the first thing that we can see over here is the market had broken above this level of resistance over here. <clears throat> and we can also see how the market had tested and rejected the 61 per 8, which is also known as the golden ratio as well. So the first thing we did was measure our take profit levels by taking our Fibonacci on this daily uh, correction. Then take profit goes to the minus 27 as well. Now the way we've entered the trade firstly, if I just have to go back over here, uh, there. So what we did was we dropped down on the four hour time frame. Um, just give me a second because that daily candle I printed there. So we dropped down on the four hour time frame first. Now, what had happened over here was the market was starting at that level there. So before we entered the market, what we wanted to wait for, because we were looking for a buying opportunity over here. The first thing we saw that the market had printed this level of support over here. Now, once support gets broken, it then become resistance. So what we waited for was a clear break above that level on the retest, look for the buys, for the market to continue higher. In doing so, the market would have then also printed this inverted head and shoulders, which is considered a bullish pattern from a technical perspective as well. So what we did was we monitored the price on the four hour time frame, waited for the market to give us a clear break, which is what the market gave us with this candle. However, we also expected the Bank of England to announce the interest rates for the GBP as well. So we waited for that fundamental data to become available as well. Now, if you go and look at this uh, article that we have here from, from CNBC that was published on the on January the 31st, so most of the speculation had come from this where the Bank of England was expected to hike the interest rate. So as I said here, on the 31st of January, Bank of England was expected to impose back-to-back -back interest rate hikes for the first time since 2004. So from a technical standpoint, we had used that as an indication and waited for that um, news to come out first. Then what happened was the Bank of England then came out on Thursday and they hiked the interest rates as expected by 0 0.25 basis points. So what we waited for was for the market to react to that information first, waited for the pullback 
and then entered. So what we had after that was the market, the news then came out, the market reacted to that news. Then what we did was we then placed a buy limit in the market at this level over here because we expected the market to pull back and take out all the, well, to take out everybody that had a buy, uh, sorry, a buy stop or sell stop in the market because we know during high impact news, that's what the market does most of the time. So the market spiked to the upside, spikes to the downside to grab the liquidity before it moves to the upside. So what happened over here was the market gave us a spike to the downside, our order got filled, and we are currently still running the trade at break even. And the reason why we are running the trade at break even was because the market had printed this level of resistance and the market had broken above that resistance. All of that resistance is now once again support. So we had moved our stop losses to break even as well because we know that the market is supposed to pull back test that level of resistance as support then continue higher if the market breaks this level of resistance that is turned support break below that go and retest it in doing so the market would then print their head and shoulders which is considered a bearish pattern from a technical perspective and we can definitely expect the market to stop us out and then potentially continuing lower as well what we also did was before entering the trade we also looked at the sentiment data so the sentiment data tells us what the retail traders are doing in the market and based on the last report we received we saw how 84 percent of retail traders were selling the market and 16 percent of them are buying the market and the one thing i'll always say is that you always want to be on the opposite side of what retail traders are doing because you know as retail traders the uh, you know the market literally uses our our orders in the market as liquidity to move the market. So because we had majority of retail traders selling the market, that gives us a higher confluence for the market to continue higher because we know it's not in the best interest for the market to move in the direction that we expect it to go there as well. So as a stand now, the trade is currently running at break even um, from where we are right now. So we are currently um, running the trade here at break even because we're waiting for the market now to break that structure. Once the market breaks above that structure, we will move our stop loss to that level because this level will then act as a level of resistance, then support, and from there would have, we would then expect the market to continue higher. So that is where we are currently with this trade as we stand right now. So we are still running the trade at a at break even, and that is what I meant by trailing stop losses according to structure. So as the market creates and breaks structure, we move our stop losses to the next structure in the market. In that way, we are always certain that the stop losses is protected by a structure. So at the moment, sorry, our stop loss is protected by this structure in the market because it acted as a resistance and it's now turned as support. And once the market breaks that resistance, this then we will move our stop loss to that entry because then our stop loss will be protected by this structure in the market as well. So that is the update on the trade that we've taken this week. So what I do want to go through uh, next is also I just want to share a trade with you guys for gold that I'll be looking at trading this week. Um, also that I think you guys might be able to look at as well. So I'm going to do the same thing for gold that I did for GBPAUD. So I'm going to do a technical fundamental order flow and sentiment analysis. Now, starting here on the monthly time frame, what do we see? Now, we can clearly see how, firstly, gold printed this massive impulse, printed the correction. However, gold never printed the next impulse. Gold entered this phase of consolidation here on the 1st of June, and the market was stuck within that consolidation phase ever since. Now, we can see how the market tested the resistance of the consolidation, so definitely a pullback expected to that level and potentially just continue within the range. Now, from a weekly perspective, what do we have over here? Now, from a weekly perspective, we can clearly see how the market had broken below this very important structure. This level over here acted as resistance multiple times. Market broke above that resistance. Support did not hold. Market came back, tested that support as resistance multiple times, rejected it to the downside. And the market is now currently trading below that level, giving us, sorry, giving us an indication that there is a move to the downside expected from a technical perspective as well. We can also see on the weekly time frame how the market printed this impulse and that correction. Now, if you take your Fibonacci there from the high to the low, 
sorry, we can see on the market had tested and rejected the 0 0.382, which gives us an indication that the downward momentum is quite strong. So we can definitely expect the market to continue lower and go and hit that previous level of support as identified from a weekly perspective. Now on the daily time frame, what do we have? From a daily perspective, we can see how the market had printed this overextended information. After an overextended information, you expect a pullback to the neckline before the continuation to the downside. What we can also see over here is, is we can see how the market had printed this level of support. Now support got broken and it's now turned resistance and the market is testing the resistance. So as it stands now from where the market is currently, we you can definitely expect a continuation to the downside from where the market is currently as well. Now, the next thing that we are going to look at is some order flow data. So the commitment of traders. So this tells us exactly what the big banks and edge funds are doing in the past. We can see how edge funds came in and they closed minus 37,421 long positions, which is buy positions. They came in and they added 10,588 selling positions. We can also see how the overall net positions had decreased from 220,151 to 172,142, giving us a further indication that the big, well, the biggest speculators in the market is definitely not interested in buying the gold in the short term. And we can also look at the NFP data that we received on Friday because we do know that there is a direct negative correlation between the dollar and the gold. And as the gold goes down, the dollar goes up. So we can see uh, that the NFP came through with a surprising gain of 467,000 jobs, which is a strong indication of a strong economy for the dollar as well. Now, if we go over here and look at the sentiment data for the gold, we can clearly see how 37% of retail traders are short and 63% of retail traders are long. Now, as I said before, you always want to be on the opposite side of what retail traders are doing. And because we've got 63% of retail traders buying, we clearly can expect to move next week to the downside going into next week as well. So that is my outlook for gold for next week. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown as well. Awesome. That's fantastic. That I, I, is it from uh, my side. <laughs> I love that. I love the fact. I, I've never seen that. Uh, I've never seen that sentiment thing being used that way. And I think it's fantastic. Such a simple thing people can do. Um, as long as you know, not too many people watch the video, and then <laughs> everyone <laughs> realizes, and they they start doing it the other way. <laughs> um, now, uh, Rolio, what's the best way for the traders to get hold of you? Um, so. Again, they can just uh, 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 get me on Instagram at Rolio Jack or uh, just on YouTube. You can just let me know down in the comments below if they've got any questions or anything they would like for me to discuss in my next video. So that's what I do. Cool. And guys, if, so, you, keep, if you keep watching, what we're going to do is get Rolio to uh, record a clip from when this thing gets released. So in a couple of weeks' time or whenever it is. And you'll see how that, we may as well do the GA trade and the gold trade, how they played out. So you can uh, yeah. quickly show you that. So that's going to come up in just a second. It'll be in this video, just a second. Um, and actually, we'll do the wrap up after that as well. Hey guys, ever wonder what broker I use? Well, I use these guys, Hanko Trade. Look, it was a no brainer for me because I was looking for a broker with really good trading conditions and one without any leverage restrictions. Look, also, by joining Hanko Trade, I was able to cut my cost of trading significantly with their super low commission of $1 per 100K. Look, if you want to find out more, check out hankotrade.com or there is a link in the description. Welcome back to a new video. Today, we're going to take a look at the gold. Now we're going to do that from a technical perspective. If you are looking for fundamental sentiment and order flow data, please go check out my YouTube channel for more educational content as well. Now starting here on the monthly time frame, what do we have? Now we can clearly see how gold is currently testing a strong level of resistance in the market. And we can see how previously the market had rejected this level multiple times. So we can expect gold in the short term to continue to the downside or correction to the downside. Now here from a weekly perspective, what do we have? Now from a weekly perspective, we can clearly see how the market had printed this very important structure over here. Now this level acted as a level of resistance twice, market broke above that, came back to retest it as support, support did not hold, the market came back, retested it as resistance, fake out created, pull back down and then came back to test that level once again as resistance. In doing so, the market also printed this head and shoulders pattern which is considered a 
Bayes-Bettis pattern from a technical perspective. The market also printed this impulse in that correction. Now, if you take your Fibonacci there from the high to the low of this impulse, you can see how the market is currently testing the 61.8, giving us a further indication that a pullback is expected purely based off the head and shoulders pattern that's potentially created and for the market to test this very strong level of resistance there in the market as well. Now from a daily perspective, what do we have now from a daily perspective, we can firstly see how the market had lost uh, this week broken above this very important structure. Now this level of react as level of support market broke below that came to test it as resistance. All of that resistance is, uh, has been broken and the market is now uh, is about to go back to test it again as support. Now, if you take your Fibonacci from the low to the high of this massive impulse, because you expect a correction, you can see how the 0 0.382 is lining up perfectly with that structure there as well. Now, because gold is currently testing this level of resistance, you can definitely expect a pullback from a price action perspective there as well. Now, the best way to approach the situation going forward is to wait for the market to pull back to the 0 0.382 as well, and then potentially start looking for buying opportunities after the market had completed that head and shoulders as we identified from a weekly perspective. One thing to keep in mind is that we do expect CPI data to come out on Thursday. So if it's positive, gold's going to get weak. And if it's negative, we can expect gold to continue the bullish momentum that it had created in the long run as well. Now that's all from my side. And as always, cheers for years. All right, guys, so that was it. So you saw the wrap up there of the gold and the GA trade. Hope you enjoyed the video we did with Rolio. Um, it's fantastic stuff. And uh, do remember, we did do a podcast before this. So go and check out the full interview to hear his full story uh, and some other information around how he is trading and what he does around his trading and some great mindset hacks as well in there. Thanks for watching. Um, do remember, check out my Robot Builders Club if you're looking to automate anything or the Genius Trader if you're looking to get your mindset on point. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Hit subscribe, hit like, click on the notifications bell and click all and we'll see you then. Bye.